we are joined by Alan Chatham, for, who is from RMIT's Exertion Lab. And my first question is obviously going to be, what is RMIT's Exertion Lab all about? So the RMIT Exertion Games Lab is a small little lab that's just recently started up. Um, and we're exploring the intersection between technology, play, and the body. So kind of seeing how, because we've seen you know the rise of like the Nintendo Wii, the Kinect, and so on that have really shown that you know we can explore this motion in our bodies and exercise, but we really think that you know as technology marches on ceaselessly and that you know technology gets smarter and smaller, um, we're going to see a lot more games come out into the physical world that are and a lot more technology get involved into. Um, physical games and so we're kind of working at that that boundary line right now right and there's a lot of different researchers doing a lot of different projects in that space that's correct um so for instance my research in addition to helping Walter out on this helmet is looking at um, how screen technology can influence uh, public game spaces um, we have uh, chad there in the lab who's working on how um games can digital games can come into public transit so you'll be on your commute and maybe you'll see chad on the train asking you to hey do you want to you know play a player game here and make your make make your ride more interesting in a in an exciting way i hate to tell you this but you've got something on your head (laughs) (laughs) when when alan says this helmet what he actually means is a, a kind of a transparent bike helmet that has flashing lights on it um, well, you explain. What are you wearing on your hands? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so the Luma helm is a helmet for right now. For it's a bicycle helmet that's modified with a big set of LED strips that um, we're programming with an Arduino microcontroller that allow us to explore the interactive potential of this big surface we have to wear on our head through national law. So, at the moment, it's it's kind of flashing red as though we're at some sort of school disco we are definitely going to have we're a to, we're photo totally going of to this start. online yeah. yeah um but like what what else can you make it do so right now the the flashing that you're seeing is uh is my heart rate so we've kind of used that a little bit to explore kind of how showing people how hard you're exerting can can influence them but we've kind of so far the demos that we've had have been some things like um a way to signal how you're going on your bike. So if you tilt your head left, you get a little blinking on the left, tilt your head right, blinks on the right. Um, a couple other things that we've worked on have been, um, we've got a really good video, just a short little clip about um, using it in conjunction with a equalizer sort of function. So Walter's there in the lab strumming on the guitar and you get the, the peaks and the, and the crests <laughs> going on. And it's, it's pretty, pretty intense. Um, you look s- nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yes, your, your heart rate looks, looks nervous no, to us. <laughs> can, can you tell us what's what's going on inside that helmet? Um, so I'll uh, take the helmet off, and it's kind of. It, are you guys ready for this? It's. Uh, let's see if we can pop it off real quick. It's it's kind of kind of freaky, go. like uh, Ooh, like yeah. Android. It's, a it's super like drawn. It's, like it's, what it is. Um, it's fantastic. So what we've got going on here is um, some little LED strips that we got from Adafruit, which is a fantastic company. And then they're powered, or they're all being powered by a big brick of um, batteries in our little casing. And that, that looks are, like a, about the size of a block of butter to me. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. Um, and it's which all is being, the physical measurement size of <laughs> batteries. <laughs> um, and then it's all just being powered off of an Arduino microcontroller board. Mm. And who's the, obviously Exertion mm. Lab are the guys writing the software for that? Yeah, and so far, Walt has been the the big driver behind most of the the software. I've been mm-hmm. kind of I've helped him out with the the hardware kind of connections and trying to get the communication going between the LEDs and the and the Arduino working out correctly. But cool. Obvious questions from from my seat will be: uh, Is the soft is the source code online? What's the license? Can you hack on it? Uh, well, so far we haven't posted anything online we're still yep. kind of working on uh Walter's in the lab and every day we're kind of trying to make a good library for this so it's going to be really easy for okay. people to use because we're kind of kind of looking at this as kind of a really great design experiment for future designers to be able to come in and be like oh i can you know go find the parts really easily um yep. and then you'll be able to, to plug it in but then it'll be you know instead of having to be like oh i'll set up this big big array and you know code all this 
big messy stuff, I'll just be like, oh, I want to make it flash blue. I just type in flash blue. <laughs> Do it. Was there was there much um, was, was there a whole lot of stuff that you could already make use of in the on the Arduino platform? Like, did you have to write much from scratch, or was there just accelerometer stuff and and LED control stuff already there for you? Oh, it was actually really great. Um, we're using an open source remote art. Uh, Wiimote library for our accelerometer that we're using currently as one of the input sensors, mm -hmm. and then all the code for the um, controlling the strips is provided open source by Adafruit again. So there's so. a little chip on the top there. Um, is that the accelerometer? Yep, that's just the accelerometer we the ripped out of our little wee nunchuck and <laughs> wee nunchuck. Oh, poor little nunchuck. <laughs> yep, it's yep. gone to a better place. <laughs> you mean for every one of these helmets, a wee nunchuck has to die? <laughs> I'm prepared to take that. Right? <laughs> um, so, did you wear did you wear the helmet as it was working on the way here, or did you just bring it? Uh, yeah, I was there on the on the tram and getting getting some some wacky looks. Because <laughs> that's sort of my question: is, is how do other people on the road or other people on public transport respond to it? I think there's a there's kind of a it's such a bright thing that just obviously, especially when it's blinking, it really just draws draws the attention to it. Um, you get a lot of we were doing some filming just even in the laneway just through the middle of RMIT and all sorts of people just kind of like stopping and pointing and be like, hey, they, you got something on your head. <laughs> Which came first, the, the desire to like have indicators and, and brake lights on a, on a helmet on a bike or just, hey, cool, we can have it make our head flash? So I think um, Marta's really, his big impetus, what kind of started this project, I guess. It actually started with one of his research projects was a system for displaying heart rate data to other cyclists. Huh. And so we just had a little iPod touch that had that was wirelessly hooked up to a heart rate monitor that was then just broadcasting kind of a number to the other bicycle behind him. Um, so he did some research kind of exploring that relationship and how that can change the kind of that social interaction can be altered by technology to facilitate exertion experiences. Um, but then he kind of got into this idea of you know, exploring kind of what we call projected data, of you know, data that you know, it's obviously on the top of your head, so you can't see what it's exactly what it's doing. Um, but kind of this idea that you know, a helmet's a really op awesome opportunity for this because you know, by law here in Australia, we have to wear a helmet. Mm -hmm. And you know, instead of a helmet being something that you know, hopefully, hopefully you never have to use it. You know, the, the only time you use it is when you're in a massive accident. Then, you know, how about the other 99.9% .9 of the time that you're wearing it? Like, why can't we do cool stuff with that? Um, it, it seems like it was sort of, you know, why hasn't it happened already kind of thing. Is there any model around for sale with LED at least, you know, responsive? <laughs> like, I know that there's ones with just lights, but is there any other responsive... Um, so far, I I don't think we've we haven't really run into anything. I think a big concern is that obviously, so everything we have is mounted on the exterior of an existing helmet, and then we vacuum formed a additional plastic case to kind of cover cover it over it and make it look somewhat less like you're some kind of android. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, kind of embedding LEDs and stuff, we, we thought about doing that, but then you know, realized drilling a bunch of holes through what's supposed to protect your protect your brain and in, in case of a crash may not be the uh, the safest approach. <laughs> may change right. the uh, the status of, of whether it meets standards as well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, what's the commercialization plan with it? Like, is it you know how how, do, how does it now get out to the marketplace? Because I know there'd be a lot of people listening that would like to buy i want to buy one I like <laughs> i really it, really want one of these i have an led flashing hula hoop with many many different colors <laughs> and i'd like to wear it with it no but um <laughs> but i actually do want on my but you know it's just such a needed thing to to be so so um strong and bright rather than just the flashing lights which kind of merge in with the environment you know sure that, i mean that's something that's really struck us in the last couple of days as we've been kind of you know exposing this to the media and getting a lot of attention and, every, and there was a lot of people who were like oh yeah that's a really awesome idea um and so one of one approach we're taking towards that is going to be kind of doing a better job documenting this because i mean all the all the materials that you know we got were relatively easy to source um you know on online and whatnot but at the same time that being a research lab that we're really focused on kind of getting the ideas 
into just you know coming up with really fun things that aren't necessarily guaranteed to be commercially viable. And so you know we're really hoping that other designers and other companies you know can can look at this and you know, really be inspired to, to go do some awesome stuff. But mm. you know, at the same time, you know we don't necessarily have you know the the right knowledge and tool sets to you know take take this and you know get something out of it that's going to be you know, ANSI certifiable. That's going to be you know, not not a threat to public self, health and safety. <laughs> because that's not really the aim of the lab, right? It's a research lab, so you are just throwing stuff at the wall to see what sticks. And sometimes literally, right? I've seen some <laughs> of the projects. Like, talk us through the the slapping one. Um, so yeah, it's uh, one of our one of our earlier projects, um, Bubble Popper, which was a game that was really trying to encourage people to physically connect with each other in a more um, aggressive way, potentially, <laughs> <laughs> where um, there's a projection against the wall with just a bunch of bubbles, and you wore these little oven mitts that had some sensors in them, and you tapped on the bubbles to pop them. Um, but the idea was it was a two-player game sharing the same horizontal or vertical wall space. And so the idea was, can we use competitive elements to you know, get people together and, you know, really kind of get them to, you know, start, you know, trying to shove each other out of the way and use their bodies to, you know, really their full bodies to both, you know, pop the bubbles, but also to defend against the other player popping bubbles. These were virtual bubbles? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how, how do you see the bubbles? Uh, they're just projected up against the wall. On the wall, okay, All right. So it's, it, I mean, it sounds like there, there's there's a lot of exciting stuff. And I mean, for me specifically with the helmet, and obviously because I'm a games person, what are the game applications of this? <laughs> like you might, you guys must sit around going, how can we turn this into a game? How can we make this a bit more than just some flashing lights on someone's head? Right, right. <laughs> well, I think there's a lot of interesting possibilities like I was discussing earlier um, with this idea of projected data and kind of a information asymmetry in games. Um, we've already kind of explored this with some other of our projects. One of them um, we call Dual Reality, which you've got these classy little top hats with little um, incandescent bulbs instead of LEDs, kind of with a little bit of a steampunk aesthetic to it. <laughs> um, but it's a sword fighting game, and in the game that um, you have a target on your shoulder and a target on your leg, and that depending on your heart rate, a different target is active, which shows up on the on the top hat, and so then. The other person with their with their sword tries to hit you on the appropriate target, but since you don't know which one is active at the same time, it has a lot of strategic implications for how you defend and how you play the game, and also how you try and control your heart rate to try right. and light up specific. Right, lights, right. Which is just I, I I don't know how I feel about games monitoring my heart monitoring rate your body. and making yeah. yeah that that seems new strategies for you, Paul. Yeah, I, I don't need any more strategies other than <laughs> sitting on the couch with a controller in my hand. <laughs> I don't, I don't I don't need to move. Um so um where like what influenced this pro this particular project? Where did it where did the idea come from? Was it just looking at bike helmets going, you know what we should do? Stick some lights on that. Stick get <laughs> let's get some lights on our bike. It was worth a riding through Melbourne, wasn't it? Uh, I think there's a, I mean there's a lot of stuff kind of coming from Malta's original project with you know, ideally, he really wanted this really awesome surface. You know, maybe co cover it in you know a flexible o OLED display so you have you know really high resolution on it um but then you know obviously due to technical restraints couldn't implement that for his original research with the bicycling um and so kind of after that project had kind of kind of started wrapping up he was kind of like well you know i still want to have this you know surface this is such a beautiful object in such a shape that you know i still want to see what it looks like when it's all lit up um so let's see you know start working on that and since you know, we kind of started putting together, started experimenting with things. We've really started to get a lot of awesome op ideas for, you know, both serious and whimsical ways of creating new interactions with, you know, something on your head. So you've got you've got a, um, a heart rate monitor, you've got an accelerometer. Any other input devices that you've thought of putting on this helmet? Uh, so a couple of things that we're working on is getting a microphone um, directly to the helmet so you can kind of go out, you know, go out to the club or go out to... <laughs> We were thinking, you know, a busking performance, you know, be out there with your with your cheesy guitar music and then, but, you know, it's, it's blinking to the beat or it's, you know, got the visualization going on again. Um, but we're also really interested in potential for wireless technologies and ways to make it be able to communicate with potentially other helmets. So if it detects, if it's able to detect, you know, two or three other helmets in the area and they maybe, maybe they start blinking at the same time 
or something we were thinking about it's like a potential safety application that you know say you're at a, in a warehouse where people are wearing hard hats already mm. um you could have some sort of sensor for something like forklift op- operators where there's a beacon on the forklift where if the forklift gets near a, another worker then a light on their helmet turns on so the forklift driver can safely avoid those people you know in darker um, you know low poorly lit warehouses that sounds amazing. Um, where can people find out more about the Exertion Lab and, and the, the Luma Helm? <laughs> so if you want to find out more, check out our website at um, exertiongameslab.org. Cool. Um, thanks very much for coming in, Alan.